We have a unique broadcasting and media landscape in the UK. A powerful mix of public and commercial firms, large and small, from the BBC and Sky to our vibrant independent production sector. Together with our national and regional media, they are central to our culture, our creative economy and our global voice. I think we need prominence, I think we need inclusion, we need fair value for our content and we need that to be done quickly and it's urgent. So we need safeguards in the digital world that we have in the linear world. And if we have that, we're asking for a level playing field. We're not asking for any special favours, any special funding. We're saying we want, in the digital world, to have safeguards so we have a level playing field. At Sky, we think the ecology works really well for serving the public. Uh, it also helps and drives competition. It drives training across the industry, uh, PSBs. Uh, particularly those with production entities like ITV and the BBC. Uh, we know, uh, train a huge swathes of our, our freelancers uh, and that's incredibly important. But I just think we also just don't have to, shouldn't underestimate the, the uh, addition that, uh, that pay TV can also bring to this and the S-Awards can bring to this. When you ask uh, uh, the public, you ask audience what's important about public service broadcasting, you will hear that trusted and accurate news is incredibly important and never has that been better demonstrated than in recent times and we've seen, um, you know, huge audiences to our linear services, huge audiences to our services on digital platforms because people really want to have accurate information at this time they can trust. I'm one of those people who believes that the fundamental uh, need for collective, uh, universally funded high quality news and culture and, 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 and uh, education and so on is as great as ever but it's no longer really going to be broadcasting and most of the, the kind of MacGuffin, the structure, the, the rules, the maybe even the institutions will either have to change or be replaced. If you want to have universal, good universal television, um, you probably have to subsidise it in some way from tax, with, with tax money. But, you know, governments get keen on state aid, and usually the state aid goes to failing industries. And while uh, this, is, this is public service broadcasting is an industry under pressure, it's not entirely clear that it's a, to me that it's a failing industry. We have to clearly try and find those audiences on, on you know, our digital platforms and wherever they can find it, as has already been said. But, you know, there it does feel, like I was saying before, that there is still a real sort of need and a, a joy in finding these big shared moments on Linear. I do think there is a, uh, a, a very, very strong case for the continuation of public service broadcasting. I do think it is worth safeguarding and worth fighting for, but the regulatory regime needs to change. Um, uh, in order to, 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 to keep up the, the content and the progress that's been made. The value of PSB has never been greater than it has been during this pandemic. You know, the value to the audience. We've seen Britain care about impartial news, care about reflecting our country. We've seen Britain care about having moments of shared connection where the nation's brought together. And I think for all of us, we've been possibly more important to the public than we have been in decades, and global streamers will never do that. They will never reflect Britain back to itself. It's not the case the provision went down and then the public went away. The public went away and then provision starts to go down. And if we don't address that issue of how we reach people where they actually are, then we're trying to shore up um, a 20th century system for an aging 20th century audience. So I knew that I had the support of the senior um, uh, leadership at the organisation, but I wasn't sure what to expect from colleagues themselves. And I have to say, I've been pleasantly surprised. It wasn't a case of people not wanting to change, but rather not knowing how to change. If you look at the social attitudes of young people, completely different to previous generations. And if you want to be relevant to them, then you do need to be inclusive. If the PSB, and particularly the BBC, is, is clever and clear-sighted about its role, it will be understood to, to still be the backbone of the screen industries in the UK. And what's happening now is that the UK um, PSBs account for 80% of all original programming that, that they're spend in the UK. So 
they are absolutely crucial to the sector. We are respected all over the world for the quality of our creative community. Well, Channel 5 matters because during lockdown, we commissioned another 120 shows, predominantly with smaller indies. It's really important now that PSBs don't retrench or, or go back on their commitment to diversity on and off screen. Uh, it, it's more crucial than ever with the pandemic because the pandemic has thrown up and shone a spotlight on inequality within society. And, and after the murder of George Floyd, the global anti-racist protests has resonated around the world. The, the industry has woken up to the systemic and endemic racism that is rife through um, the, the screen industries. So uh, I think the PSBs have a, a huge responsibility. I think one of the um, issues for debate is the funding of it. Um, you know, we have a model where the BBC is maintained by the licence fee, and I think we've already begun to see evidence that people are questioning whether they need to pay the licence fee because the linear viewing is declining. People are now um, saying that they get all their content online through on-demand platforms. I think the challenge for the BBC is how much is there still left to cut? Um, there's a difference between trimming fat and, you know, amputating a limb. Uh, and it, it actually may be, I mean, Tim's talked about, you know, what can we do with 80% and where would we spend the other 20%? There is a danger that BBC will kill programmes that people love uh, to fuel an inflationary boom that they don't necessarily need to be a part of. I haven't seen a model that beats the current one at the moment, all right? And that is a universally funded licence fee. The vast majority, vast, vast majority of households think it offers very good value. The licence fee is the worst possible means of financing public service, except for all the other ones.